Hey folks, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin, my 2D RPG about a marine biologist that I'm building with Godot. It's good to see y'all again. It's been a while since the last kind of full format devlog episode. It's the start of October here in Virginia. We're kicking off fall and I'm really excited for what we're gonna be building in today's video. First, to get you quickly caught up from the last episode, what I've been working on is the foundation of what I'm currently calling Dauphin's Island Tier System. And the idea behind this system is that as the player explores all of Dauphin's different islands and fights the corruption that they find, those different islands and their environments begin to heal, meaning that new flora start to grow, new fauna start to spawn, and the overall island becomes healthier and more vibrant around the player as they're cleaning up that corruption. Now the twist here and the fun part for the player is that these new flora and fauna that come to the island can themselves now become corrupted. So you can imagine we save some low level organisms on an island, their predators start to appear and become corrupted. They're a little bit bigger and stronger. So now we have new combat challenges for the player and an opportunity for the player to earn new rewards. This system has been a ton of fun to build and play with over these past couple weeks, and it's really providing a nice sense of like world progression around the player as they explore and engage in combat. However, the one thing it's made me realize is that it is entirely reliant on Dauphin's combat system, which right now is horrible. The good news is this is not unexpected. I very purposefully added as simple of a combat system as possible to Dauphin years ago just to allow me to have a mechanism to test out all my ideas for how the corruption system would work. So right now, really all I have is one weapon that I can swing left, right, up, and down. So if you want to attack enemies at an angle, you're kind of out of luck. And I believe we have a secondary fire mode here that shoots a ranged projectile. When it comes to actually removing corruption from organisms, you can see I'm having some serious problems with my knockback and collision detection. But other than that, it has been enough for me to get the job done working on all of the different systems that I have so far in the game. I have a lot of ideas for how to design Dauphin's combat. And if I'm being completely honest with you all, I don't know how they're all going to come together yet. I've been doing a lot of research and playing a lot of games that have great 2D combat, things like Crosscode and Hades and Cult of the Lamb. And there are things that I really like about those games that I'd like to bring in to Dauphin. I also want to make sure I have a really great feeling of progression for the player so that as they're fighting at those higher island tiers and getting better rewards, they can really feel themselves get stronger through this combat system. There's a lot to balance here. The plan, since I've been talking long enough at this point, is to jump in and start with the very basics, how it feels for the player to swing their weapon, how it feels to make contact with a corrupted organism, and what that feedback looks like on the screen. Those things basically don't exist right now, and I need those basics in place before I start getting really fancy with different items and attacks that the player can wield. It is a really beautiful October Monday morning here. Unfortunately, off to work, so no time for a development session. I'll look forward to one either tonight or tomorrow morning, and we'll catch up soon. Hey folks, quick update here on Tuesday morning. I've just wrapped up about an hour and a half's worth of work. and I've actually made some pretty good progress for that time, so I wanted to get you caught up. The first and probably most important change I made this morning was the ability for the player to attack in any direction. You can see that as I click around the player in 360 degrees, this little kind of swipe projectile is always going to be facing where the mouse is pointing. Even better news than that, I was really worried that in order to make that look good, I would have to create four more player animations for the diagonal directions. I'm really happy that this seems to look just fine even with my initial up, down, left, right swing animation. So this was a big win this morning. With that change made, I wanted to tweak and fix just a few more small things. The first of which is obviously the knockback issue that we saw before, but the second was the ability to swing this weapon more quickly. And this was an easy fix. It really just amounted to decreasing a cooldown timer in between these swings. So if I aggro this little crab over here and start to give him a few hits with the weapon here, you can already see that between the knockback and the faster swinging, it's still very basic combat, but it's already much snappier. 
And finally, as you might have noticed already, our corrupted organisms now have the notion of a kind of corruption health bar that appears when their corruption level changes. You saw this just appear when those crabs transferred corruption between each other, but that'll also stay active and start to disappear once I engage in combat and remove that corruption. This will be followed up shortly with some accompanying damage values as well, just to make it a little more clear to the player what they're doing in combat. Looking ahead to tonight or tomorrow morning, I think my next task is gonna be cleaning up this player attack state. Things are working pretty well here, but as you can see from these various attributes within this state, a lot of things like the lunge force and the attack animation duration, these are part of the attack state right now, but I really want these to be associated with individual weapons so that some weapons let you lunge further, attack faster or slower, and really I have to kind of set up a foundation for probably a weapon data resource that will allow me to create these different weapons with different behaviors. That'll do it for now. I am back off to work, so we'll catch up soon. Hey folks, welcome back. We have zoomed ahead to Saturday afternoon at this point. I am still in the weeds of this refactor for the code for how I want the player's attack system to work, but I'm in a pretty good stopping point, so I wanna pause and give you all a quick run through of where I am. As I talk you through some of my decisions here, I think it'll be important to have the full context of how the player executes attacks all the way from the first part of that process where we're capturing input. So I wanna quickly walk you through that, and of course that's gonna start in my player class here. So I'll zoom down to, I think, line 140 something for my unhandled input function where I'm capturing input. There's a couple things happening here, but most importantly for this discussion is capturing my use item primary input. The main thing that's happening here is that I'm looking at the player's item bar to see what their selected item is, and I'm performing a certain action based on that item's item type. In my case, weapons are a subtype of the tool item type. So when the player uses a weapon from their item bar, it's gonna jump into this block and ultimately call the use tool function. This function is pretty straightforward and is almost doing the same thing, just in a different place. We're looking at the subtype of this tool. In my case, we care about weapon here, and we're requesting the appropriate state from my state machine, which in this case is the attack state. The player attack state is where things start to get interesting, and we'll take a quick look at what happens when we enter this state. When we enter this state, we look to make sure that we have a reference to that weapon from the item bar and some attack data that we care about from that weapon. And we'll talk about that attack data in just a moment. Once we know we have those things, we're ready to proceed with our attack. So what I do is I take the instance of that weapon scene and add it to the player's right hand so that we can see it swing. And then we perform that swing animation. I won't spend too long on the animation part. You can see that's happening here as I pass that responsibility off to my player body, and this is all part of that swing function we just looked at. But I will call out that as part of that animation, I'm passing in the mouse vector, the direction in which we have clicked, because that's gonna be important to determine which way we actually execute that animation. And again, a reference to attack data, which we will come back to. I do a few other things here, like start some timers, keep track of how long we've been attacking, applying a lunge force, and then most importantly, I call the function use primary on the instance of my weapon. All right, we're getting close here. We are now in the weapon class, which again represents that tool that the player had selected in their item bar when they provided that use item input back at the start of this whole thing, right? So we just saw that we're calling the use primary function from the player attack state, and this is where we start to instantiate the attack that we're putting out into the world. You can see that we are creating an instance from a primary attack scene. You can see that highlighted up here, and where we are loading this attack scene from is that primary attack data. Once we have an instance of this attack, we add it to the world, we use a helper function to make sure we position it in the correct direction based on where we click, and then we call finally an execute function on the instance of that attack. With the attack itself spawned into the world at this point, it's entirely the attack's job to do whatever it needs, whether that's creating a projectile, some kind of melee attack, or even in the future, some cool area of effect attacks to remove corruption from large areas at once. 
my coral slash attack here, which is the most basic attack you've been seeing for a long time now, is very simple. I have an animation player here where we just play this very simple slashing animation. You can see I have an anti-corruption node, which I activate part of the way through this animation, and that's actually what removes corruption from the world. And that's it. It's dead simple for this particular attack. The last piece of the puzzle here is that attack data resource that we kept seeing in multiple places throughout that flow. The goal here in this resource is to describe as much as possible about an individual attack. So things like the name and description and base damage for something like a weapon tool tip. You saw in the weapon class itself, we were using the attack scene path to spawn an instance of the attack to put into the world. And we also saw that I was passing attack data into my animation helper functions. That was so we could use this modifier here to speed up or slow down attack animations for individual attacks that I want to feel either snappier or more cumbersome and clunky. This all comes back to the weapon here. If I click back over to this scene, you can see that each weapon accepts two attack data items. One as a primary attack and one as a secondary attack. And this is how we associate attacks with weapons. Now with all that done, unfortunately that has not made any particularly big changes to what you see out here when I actually play the game and attack, apart from that attack speed modifier being pretty fun to play with for rapid fire melee attacks right now. So that's kind of cool. But if you watch that and you have thoughts or if you've designed attack systems in Godot yourself, I'd love some feedback. This is already feeling a bit more flexible than before, actually probably a lot more flexible. And the whole point of it was to help me easily create new attacks and easily associate those with new weapons. So I think that's probably where I'm gonna move next, try to branch out past this particular attack that you've been seeing for years now as I've been developing Dauphin and move on to some more interesting combat concepts. I think I'm probably done with development for today. It was a busy morning and I could use a break and I'd also like to kind of get caught up editing this video this afternoon. So I will do that and get started again tomorrow morning. Hey folks, joining you again on Wednesday afternoon here. I'm recording this over my lunch break as I have just been super heads down in the mornings trying to crank out as much progress as possible before releasing this devlog this weekend. The good news is that I did make some great progress when it comes to implementing new attacks on top of this new weapon and attack architecture that we've been working on. So I'm excited to show you. I'm gonna start with the demo here, and this will look very simple, but really it's a good proof of concept for how easy it now is to add new weapons and attacks into the game, which will be so important as I start to add more content to Dauphin. So we still have our left click attack, same slash animation as before. This is just a really nice mainstay melee attack here. But what I've been working on is a brand new area of effect type attack that we create with the right mouse click. This is a very different type of attack than I've had to handle before. We're not spawning it at the player and pointing it in a certain direction. Instead, we're spawning it on the mouse target and creating an area of effect that can remove a bunch of corruption from a handful of close organisms at once, which turns out to be a very satisfying thing to do as you're walking around and exploring these islands. The most time consuming part of building up this attack was just creating the artwork, which is great news. I wanted this to be as simple as possible once I had my assets in hand. Once I did have that artwork done, all I had to do was come into the engine and subclass my base attack scene and set this up however I wanted. So I set my sprite with my artwork. I set up an animation player, which does some simple animation. And I even have that animation player turning on the collision for my anti corruption here, which is what deals damage to corruption in game. So my animation player is handling a lot of the legwork here. In my custom script for this attack, it's only about 20 lines long. When we execute this attack from the weapon, we play that animation 
and when that animation is done, we remove this attack from the scene. I did have to make one change in my weapon scene to accommodate this new area of effect attack type, and you can actually see that here in both my use primary and use secondary functions. Where I previously called a helper function called position attack, which just made sure to spawn the attack next to the player and point it in the right direction, I now have helper functions for melee, range, and AoE attacks, which are designed to do different things. The melee and range attack positions need to be next to the player and facing the right direction, but the AOE attack here just needs to be at the global mouse position. So this was a really easy fix. After building my new attack and creating its associated attack data resource, all I had to do was drag that resource into the secondary attack data export on my coral wand here. And that was the last piece of hookup that I needed. I was able to launch the game and right click to execute this attack. Once I had all that working, I really just kind of had some fun playing with it for a while. I tweaked the attack speed and various damage values to see what it felt like to quickly clear out corruption and level up my island tiers much more efficiently than I was able to do in the past with my melee attack here. Something else you might notice is that I've also been working on my kind of damage pop-ups here when you inflict anti-corruption damage on a corrupted organism. We now support critical hits that will appear as gold text and a little bit bigger when you actually apply that damage. So just a nice little bit of quality of life there. I think we've got a great start here to the foundation of how I as the developer can build and add new attacks and weapons for Dauphin and how the player can reliably execute those attacks. That said, we are far from done with this refactor. If we look at my notes here, you can see I'm thinking about things like dodging and blocking and parrying and really importantly, programmatic modifiers to attacks. So for things like this area of effect ground attack I just built, I'd love to be able to increase the size or the radius of that attack programmatically and have that apply to other attacks of the same type. If I add those modifiers to armor that the player can craft or pick up, all of a sudden we've got a nice sense of progression that that player can enjoy as they discover those new drops. So this will be the end of part one of the big combat refactor. I'm not sure how many parts there will be, but I'm excited to keep moving forward. I know the bar was low, but already Dauphin's combat is so much more fun to engage with in just a week's worth of progress. So I'm excited to see where it goes from here. I hope you all enjoyed this episode and are looking forward to part two. As always, I want to really thank the folks who are showing their love for the channel and Dauphin on Patreon. My beta supporter this month is Mike Conway, and my Grammy supporters are Ben Van Dyken, David L. and Kyle Van Riper. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'll see you soon.